And guys, the last and most important thing you need to add in your portfolio is in this video, I'm gonna show you six critical things that you're missing on your portfolio site, and I'm also gonna show you six real life examples to go along with it so you can better understand how to implement it on your own website. Now, before we get started, if you're new here, my name is Arnaud Ross, I'm a designer, and my mission here is to help you be a better designer. Now, before we get started, the one point that I wanna make about portfolio sites that are super important is that portfolio sites need to have a purpose. If you wanna get hired by a company, they're gonna be designed in one way. If you wanna show off your work, and if you wanna show off your portfolio, then it's gonna be designed in another way. So keep that in mind, when you look at these sites and you compare them to your own site because again you never know what these people are trying to do and are trying to get a job or show off their work right you never really know so let's get into it the first thing that any portfolio set needs is good design now what does that actually mean what I mean by good design is you want your site to be as easy to understand as possible now if you're a beginner and you're just getting started and web design isn't your strength or you make logos and web design isn't really your thing then it's best to just stick with one to two colors one to two fonts and really keep it to basics right you want to have a very simple foundation so that your portfolio and your work can stand out. Now, these are two examples here that create this effect very well. So this is Madison Fido dot design. And this website here only has two main colors. It's got this dark gray or even black, if you want to call it. And then this off white beige color here in the background. And again, it only has one to two fonts. It's got this font that almost looks like it's Helvetica. And again, it lets the portfolio or the work speak for itself. It doesn't have hundreds of animations coming in. It doesn't have all these super fancy flashy things. It's a very simple website that showcases her work very well. And again, it only has one to two fonts. It only has one color. And so this person has mastered those two things and created a very simple, clean website. Now the next site here is IvetteFelixUY.com. And if I reload the site here, you'll see this very simple and clean animation of this lemon here that bounces in. And we'll go over that later on in the video because it's also very important. But this website also showcases those traits of a very clean and minimal website. So this person has one to two fonts here. They've got one to two colors here and they let the work speak for themselves. The animation, the only animation that exists on this scroll is this fade in that almost helps the user learn what the next project is about. It's not this dramatic experience that will confuse you or will confuse the users. It's a very simple, clean website. Now throughout this video, we're gonna go from very simple websites to very complex websites. And I hope that explains a little bit about my thinking here because again, I think that you should have the basics as well learned as possible before you go on and try to create these fancy animations unless that is your point of your website. You wanna show off your animations and, and your power in animation. Then that's a complete, completely different video topic. But these two first examples should showcase the basics and how well your website can look if you have a really nicely designed font and you pick out your colors thoughtfully. Now the next thing that your portfolio site might be missing is showcasing your best projects. Now what I mean by that is that when you're starting out, it might be hard to not wanna showcase all of your projects because you have so few, but really if you're trying to get hired or if you're trying to get an internship on one thing or another, then try to only upload projects and showcases that attack that job that you wanna get. So let's get into it. Here's an example called liamforshort.com. And this website showcases very few projects, but again, these projects are extremely well done. So as we drag here, we see that the first thing that this person's showcasing is a UI kit that they built. Now, if I'm an employer, I see this as the best part of their portfolio. If it's the first thing that they're showcasing, then I'm gonna think that it's the best of their work and it's not gonna get much better than this, right? Maybe their second is gonna be the second best and third is gonna be third best. But if it's a UI kit that they're showcasing, then I wanna pay attention to that. Now, as we scroll here and as we drag, we see that they go from a UI kit to a web app to then a rebrand. Now, I wanted to showcase this website as well because it almost showcases things that you almost shouldn't do. So if I wanna get hired for designing web apps or UI kits, then I should only showcase that but it doesn't make sense to be putting rebrands on the end here because it's not necessarily related to too much. Now, something this person could have done is having one section for UI components or UI kits and websites, and then another section just for rebrands and just for, for logos and more graphic design related things. Now, even if this person is talented with both things, it's important to not mix them up because as an employer, they might get confused. But again, if the person's purpose here is to just showcase all of their work, then ignore everything I'm saying and then everything will be okay. But if the person is trying to get a job for branding or for, for doing rebrands, then it might not make sense to add it as the last project. Now, a website that does this very well is lease.cool. So lease Kyle Chapman 
is a multidisciplinary product designer enjoying the trees in the Pacific Northwest. So this person has three projects and only three projects, but when you go into these projects, they're extremely well curated. And what I mean by that is this, every project has its own story, its own problems, and it tries to bring you through the process of this person's brain. So this person was working at Adobe and they were in charge of redesigning the cloud page. So here we can see all the problems, the research, the goals, the constraints, how they measured their success, the key screens, the impact. And so again, we're showcasing only three projects, but within these projects, they're extremely well done. They showcase from zero to 100, how the solution came from all the problems and not the other way around, right? You're not just showcasing, here's a cool logo, here's a cool website, here's this, here's that, here's a UI kit. They're explaining the process and how they got to the end result. And again, this is why I think this website does that so well and why I think you should take notes from this sort of process. Now you might be thinking that that's gonna take a long time and you're right, it's definitely gonna take a long time. But if you're trying to get hired, if you're trying to get an internship or whatever it is, it's gonna take time to build a great portfolio that impresses employers. Because again, employers are gonna be looking at these portfolio sites day in, day out, at least 30, 30 per hour, right? Like how, how fast can you scroll through a website? That's basically what they're, what they're doing here. So it's good to try to keep them into the site, get them to read your process and really understand how you work, how your brain works and why you would benefit them in their company. So one thing I wanna include here that isn't showcased on any of these websites is having a great testimonial page. Now, testimonials are easy to make. You just have to get a quote from a person and put it on a screen and done, right? Testimonial done. Well, actually, no. The best testimonials are testimonials that have a personal example of why this person worked with you, why you did so well for them, and almost having a link to their profile along with an image of them. That'll create a more personable testimonial that people can relate to rather than just a piece of text on a screen. Now, another thing I wanna showcase on this website is a great call to action. Now, the more clear your call to action is, the more the people you're trying to reach will understand that that message is for them. So if we scroll down here on this lease.cool, we see that there's this footer here. Let's work together, currently looking for lead and senior positions at design-led, empathy-driven companies. So this person is looking for a very specific job. She knows exactly who she's trying to reach. And by adding this in the footer, this is her CTA. Now, granted, this could be made a little bit better having a better CTA here, like maybe an email form, but she does link her her, her email, her resume, her LinkedIn. And so that, that does kind of work well for her. But I would almost suggest having a Calendly link directly embedded in your site. And that's easily done with Webflow. I'm not sure with WordPress or other sites, but that's easily done. And that'll just generate a very simple and quick way for people to reach you whenever they want to reach you. The most important thing you need to add in your portfolio website is showcasing your personality. Now, this is something that not a lot of people do when they build their portfolios. And that's a big mistake. Now, a lot of people use their portfolios as a way to showcase their projects and their work, which is fine. But if you're trying to get hired and if you're trying to get people to contact you and to want to work with you, it's also extremely important to showcase a little bit about who you are, what you do as a side hobby, what you do on the weekends. And what that will do is showcase a little bit more of a human side to you. So this person has done this extremely well. Amunes.net slash about, this is his about page. But if we scroll down, we see that he's a passionate cyclist and motorbike adventurist. And he's also a senior designer and art director. So as you scroll down even more, we'll see that there's a picture of him cycling and also a picture of him hiking or in the mountains or something. And that's, I think that's amazing because if I go and I wanna work with this person, I see what he's like. I see a little bit about what he does as a hobby, who he is. And again, that's extremely important when you want to work with someone and when, you, when you're when you hiring as a company. Now, if you want to watch how I built my personal website, then make sure that you watch this video right here. Now, keep in mind, this website is not built absolutely. So don't take that as an example, but take these websites here as an example. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.